Hello and welcome to Nature Day's Outdoor Learning Resources. Today we're going to investigate what's living inside a river. You probably didn't see any animals when you looked in the river just now, but there are lots there. But because the river water would wash them away, they're all hiding. They're hiding underneath the rocks. So we're going to work out a way of trying to encourage them to come out so we can collect them, count them, find out what they are and find out what's living in the river. If you've got a river near you locally, then you can do this yourself as long as you do it safely. You don't need a proper net, you could just use a sieve, but make sure you ask permission first and you go with somebody. This is how you collect the animals in a river. Take your net, place it in the river so the water is flowing through it. Then you need to stand upstream of the net and you're trying to get the animals from underneath the rocks. So you just need to wiggle them. And as you wiggle, you're moving all the stones and all the animals underneath are being washed into your net. So if you can see the muddy water going into your net, your net's in the right position. Keep doing this for about 30 seconds. And the longer you do it, the more of the animals will get washed into your net. You should find you end up standing inside a hole. See all those things squirming around? Those are our animals. Into the bucket with them. Once you've seen your animals, the first thing you need to decide is whether they're living in a case or in a shell. Now this one here is my favourite animal. And if you look very carefully, you can see it's made a case out of tiny little grains of sand. And you can see his head poking out. Now this is a cased caddisfly larvae. Larvae means that it's the young of an adult. A bit like a caterpillar is the larvae of a butterfly. Now this cased caddisfly is going to live in the river for about three years inside this case and get bigger and bigger. Then one day it's going to seal up the end of its case and it's going to pupate. It's going to turn into an adult and the adult is a flying adult and it will chew through the end of the case and then fly off. It will find a mate, it will lay eggs in the river again and then it will die. It's only an adult for a few weeks Whereas as a child, it will be five or so years inside the river. If you want to know what it looks like inside, you have to find a caseless caddisfly, which we've got over here. So this is a caseless caddisfly, exactly the same looking on the inside as the cased one, but obviously it's not living inside a case. If you look at its tail, it's got two little hooks, and that's how it hooks itself inside its case so it doesn't fall out when it's trying to walk around. So it holds onto its case like that. So even if it doesn't have a case, you can still identify it. Now, can you see how many legs it's got? That's the next most important identification feature. So if it's got six legs, it's going to be an insect. And that will tell us how we can identify it. Once you know it's an insect, the next most important thing is its tail. So if we move to another insect that we've found, and look at its tail, we can compare. So over here we've got a tiny little animal. You can see it's got six legs, so it's an insect, but look at its tails. It's got three tails. That means it's either a mayfly nymph or a damselfly nymph, and we need to look at an identification guide to find out which. If it had two tails, like now we've got a tutor one over here, this one here, can you see right on the edge, that one's got two tails, that's a stonefly nymph, oh, and we've just got a dragonfly nymph trying to nudge into the picture. So let's look at the dragonfly nymph, our big one here. So again, six legs, so we've got an insect, but look at its tails, it's got two or three, but they're very, very small. If the tails are smaller than the width of the animal's body, and the animal looks like this, it's going to be a dragonfly nymph. 
again that's a baby dragonfly and when this gets old enough which this one nearly is it will turn into an adult dragonfly and it does that by crawling up the stem of a plant that's standing inside the river as it hits the air its exoskeleton which is on the outside will get hard and then it will just wait there and inside it will start to change. It will metamorphose into an adult dragonfly, which will have long wings. If you look down the back of this nymph though, it's got what we call pseudo wings. It's got pretend wings. It can't fly, but it will have wings when it's pupated. So once that's got it completely changed inside it, it will break out of the back of its, of its exoskeleton, and then it will pull out its wings, fill them with blood, dry them in the sun and fly off and again all that adult will need to do is find a mate lay its eggs in the river and it will die so it will only last as an adult for about a, a few weeks as a youngster as a nymph like this it will be five or so years in the river and if you look carefully underneath it if i can very carefully pick him up be very careful with your animals underneath it's got a mask this thing here by its mouth is on a, a claw. It's got big claws on the end and it's on a hinge. And when it goes to try and eat something, because it's an ambush hunter, if an animal swims past it, it will fire out that jaw on a hinge and those claws on the end will grab hold of the animal and then it will pull it into its mouth. So an amazing hunter, ambush hunter when it's in the river, when it's flying around, it's an amazing aerial hunter, one of the best flying hunters we have in this country. So those are all the insects we found. But we've also got some animals with many more legs, and these ones tend to be moving quite fast. So you see the ones that are swimming here? There he is. Try and count their legs, much harder. But we don't need to know how many legs they've got, we just need to know they've got more than six. This means they're probably in the family of the isopods, or they might be crustaceans. And if we look at our ID guide, the fact that they've got so many legs which are moving all the time and they're swimming on their side means that these are freshwater shrimps. In your pond, you might find ones that are crawling along the bottom instead of swimming sideways that look a bit like wood louse. Those are water louse and water louse are much slower and easier to identify because they stay still. Anything with more than six legs is not going to be an insect, so we can easily identify them as a different group. That's all the animals we've got here, but what we're going to do next, we're going to show you the bucket and see if you can use the identification guide to see which ones you can identify in the bucket. See if you can create a tally of those animals and work out what we call our pyramid of numbers. How many herbivores we've got, how many carnivores we've got. Once you've identified your animals and you've tallied them on your tally chart, don't forget to put them back in the river very gently. Give your bucket and your net a wash out so you know nothing is left behind in the bucket. Once you've identified the animals, you can start to group them or sort them by different characteristics. Look at the ID guide to find out what they eat, and then you can create a food web to find out what's eating what. You can look at the identification guide and see if you can create your own key. Or you can look at one animal in particular and create a picture of it thinking about how it might be adapted to live inside the river. Is there anything that makes it perfectly adapted? You could also create your own imaginary animal, the perfect river animal, and see how you can make it adapt even better for the river environment. This river is located near Reynoldston on Gower. Why don't you look for a river near you? See if you can make a map of it and see where it came from, where its source is and where it ends up in the sea. You could create your own story of what it's like to be an animal that gets lost in the river and gets sent out to sea. Don't forget to post what you've got on Twitter, hashtag NatureDays.